For the past 50 years, Lassie has been known as the most amazing and well-trained collie in movies and television. Robert Weatherwax, Lassie's owner and trainer, is truly one of the masters in the animal training world. In his career, Bob has worked with more than 1,500 dogs, yet he says the greatest pleasure in his life has been his companion for the past five decades, Lassie. The legend of Lassie began in the late 1930s with the book Lassie Come Home, written by Eric Knight. It was a heartwarming story that came to life because of the magical bond between a boy and his dog. This touching novel launched the greatest animal star in film and television history. Thank you, Lassie. Roddy McDowell was Lassie's companion in the film. His co-star was none other than Elizabeth Taylor. I hope you won't worry too much about Lassie. I'll take care of her. Really, I will. MGM auditioned more than 1,500 dogs for the title role of Lassie. Red Weatherwax's dog, Pal, was chosen as the stunt double. Six weeks into filming, history was changed when Pal had to do a very difficult scene in which Lassie had to swim from Scotland all the way back to England. So after swimming this river, which is tough current, the dog has to come out very exhausted. So my father designed it where he'd come out and he wouldn't let him shake because an exhausted dog wouldn't shake. And then he had him come slowly, then collapse. And then lay there motionless. And it was a beautiful scene. After that scene, legend has it, the director said, Pal swam in, but Lassie swam out. They reshot the first six weeks of the film. In the 1940s, Lassie's star continued to rise as her seven MGM movies made $248 million. She also starred beside some very famous actors, such as James Stewart and Mickey Rooney. In 1953, Lassie moved into television. To young Jeff Miller, I leave the best thing I've got, my dog, Lassie. She's all yours, son. This new show caught the attention of people across the nation. And in 1955, Lassie won an Emmy for Best Children's Program. Lassie! But you don't have to go any place. You can stay right here forever. Then, a few years later, Tommy Reddick sure. passed the baton to and John Provost. To Provost, at the age of six and a half, back. was to become you Lassie's to new anyplace. companion. I'll send Lassie with you. I'll give her to you. For a very own? Uh-huh. Honest? Honest, Timmy. <laughs> the duo of John Provost and Lassie continued the legacy as the boy and his dog were companions to the end. Lassie, are you sure he came this far? It's not a long ways from home. Okay. If you say so. The show was number one in its time period for 10 years, and its 18 consecutive seasons rates Lassie as the second longest running TV show in history. Robert Weatherwax has had the pleasure of growing up with all eight generations of Lassie, all direct descendants of Pal. In fact, it has taken more than 1,000 puppies to find the eight generations of Lassie. Since the Collie's markings, a white blaze, two white front paws, and a full white coat are so rare. Excuse me, God. I forgot something. And bless my new mother and father. Amen. While Lassie's character has always been a female, since the dog in Eric Knight's original story had puppies, in real life, all the Collies have been male. She won't hurt you. Go ahead.
And while generations pass, the legend and the magic continue. Who would have thought that this amazing collie, who started as a stunt double, would become Hollywood's biggest animal star? But for the past five decades, Lassie has touched the hearts of millions across the world, always there to give her help and love to those in need. That's a boy. Good work, Bob and Lassie. Best lunch. That's a boy. That's a good dog. All right, come on, come on, come on. That was good. That's real good, yes. That was a good dog. Bob, this system wasn't born yesterday. It's got about five decades of experience behind it, doesn't it? At least that. You know, my father started training dogs in motion pictures back in the 20s. He was taught by his father. And then working with him in all the years in the Lassie show, I learned probably, what, 60 years of accumulated knowledge. You really have a special relationship with the dog, don't you? Well, I spend a lot of time with Lassie. I've traveled across the country. We do tours with him. I've been to children's hospitals. You know, the, the relationship that we build is, is, is really built on training and being with the dog so much and, and sharing so much experience with him. Well, my grandfather was Walter Weatherwax, and uh, he passed away when I was only three, but uh, he moved to New Mexico, where my father was born in 1907, and he was an Army Territorial Scout for the Indians, for the Indians, and he, he also was a U.S. Marshal, but not all the time. It was one of these things like when they wanted a posse, they came and they'd say, Walter, put on your, put on your badge, put your gun on, we're getting ready to go out. And, and, uh, get ready to go out and look for bandits, which they did one time. He also trained horses and was a trick rider for Buffalo Bills, Walt West Circus. My father could trick ride too. He, he knew horses, he could train them. He'd learned these things from his father, but my father would go down, I guess uh, there was this thing called a Nickelodeon, put a nickel in the Nickelodeon and you'd wind it and you could see things. Well, my father fell in love with the whole concept of, of Rin Tin Tan, a dog that plays in movies, you know. He, he really loved that. He says, this is what I want to do. How he, how he got into the whole thing is he came to Hollywood and he was doing stand-in work, you know. They'd go down to the extras. He realized if he took a little dog with him that that would be an extra thing, you know, that they'd say, oh, well, not only do we get a kid for the extra, we have a dog too, so that's extra bonus there. So he'd get picked over a lot of other kids. So he had a shot where the dog, he's supposed to be on a newspaper uh, delivering papers on a bicycle, and the dog is with him, following him. Well, what he did is he taught the dog to take the newspaper. The dog ran in the house with the newspaper, and because uh, they had the door open, the people were outside. He runs into the house, the director says, well, you're, you're finished, but he says, we need the dog for the interior shot. Well, then my father went and did it where he drops the paper and goes back out the door for the interior shot. and. Uh, there's a guy named Henry East there that saw this, and he was an animal supplier he, for, for dogs. And he saw my father's talent, and he says, you want to go to work for me. And my father went to work for him, and for him, he trained, uh, he trained Asta for the Thin Man. My father didn't get college. Colleagues didn't get jobs. You know what we got our jobs with? Most of them were mutts. I'd go out, and uh, as a kid, I didn't have anybody to play with, so they'd find me out in the kennel with one of the mutts, flavor of the day. And uh, he did have a couple of shepherds because they got jobs. And we had a bulldog because they got jobs. But mostly it was mutts, nondescript dogs is what the movies wanted. So he didn't have a collie. And this guy named Howard Pat brought this collie to him. They were friends. He was a trainer himself. And he says, this dog chases motorcycles. And his owner wants him broken. And he says, I can't break him with chasing these motorcycles. Could you? So dad says, yeah, for ten, I think it was $10 or something. I don't know. Anyway, dad couldn't break him up at either. And so uh, he came back and uh, Dad said, I can't break him up. And he says, just forget the whole thing. And he said, well, he said, but you do owe me board for about $10 for boarding him. And um, Fax will keep the dog in lieu of the $10. So actually last was a $10 purchase uh, this dog pal. Well, then my father didn't know what to do with him. And you know, times were tough. He had to feed all these dogs. And so he was going to take, my mother said, well, he was going to take him to the pound, but he decided, no, I, I can't do that. And 
Here Comes This Last Week at Home movie. Well, I was preparing to do a movie called uh, a Rip Goes the War. This is during the wartime, so they're making those type of movies. And, and he, now he has to go get this dog. Well, the dog has mange, he has no hair, he's all, he's a mess. And he gets the dog and goes in there because they told him, look, we need a dog to stand in for this other dog. It's not working properly. MGM had hired their own collies. And he said, the dogs are not performing properly. We need you to come in, at least do this river shot. So dad prepared for the river, basically. That's all he prepared for. And the dog swam in the river. And the current started carrying the dog down the river. So dad just kept working. And he came out in front of a color camera they were testing. And dad just kept working. And we had him come out, lie down, crawl, get on your side, struggle. They shot it, you know, and, and the director looked at that and he says, you know what? He says, pal swam in and Lassie swam out. We're gonna they took it back, looked at their at their at their footage, and they said this will be in color. We were all we were all the, the, the substitute prop boy that you used or girl that you used to train the dog on before you went with Roddy McDowell or Elizabeth Taylor. I was, uh, I was the, the guy you teach the dog to kiss in the face. I had baby food on me all the time, and eventually you get away from the baby food. The dog learns to kiss you. But I always had that stuff in my face. And uh, when I was about 11 or 12, I maintained 40 dogs before I went to school. And I came home and took care of them after that and then fed them at night. And so uh, I knew all about dogs, you know, as far as that goes. But I actually didn't become a trainer until I went on the Lassie show in 1962 and then I actually started to learn how to train a dog. We would do fairs and uh, rodeos sometimes. I never liked rodeos, but we did fairs. And uh, what he would do is he'd have a, a writer put on his contract, it was an additional page, that said that wherever we go, that we would go to a hospital, a children's hospital of some type, it didn't matter what type, uh, whether it's, you know, whatever the illness is, it didn't matter. He did that, and I, you know, it was tough on him, too. I could see this is, this is not good. This is hard to do. Why do you do that? He says, I came, I came from nothing. He says, I'm fortunate. It's my church, he said. That's how I do my church. And then I, I thought about that, and I thought about, in retrospect, the hospitals that we did. And I, I've done my movie career. I mean, 42 years of, of making TV, movies. I, I couldn't even tell you my body of work. I, it's, it's vast. And, um, and I said, well, you know, I'd like to apply this in another way. I want to go to what we did with those personal appearances, those hospitals. I, I want to teach and with what, you know, autistic people, people I've taken Lassie to, people with Alzheimer's, they didn't know who it was, but they were happy. I would like to do that, and I'd like to show people how to train their dogs, properly train them so they can go and do these things. See the, see the, the veterans from the war that, that have come back. And these dogs are so good for any type of therapy, for anything.